All right, guys, let's talk about the truth of modern knife steel. Now, whether you love 154CM, CPM S30V, and other slightly older steels that I think still have a lot of validity and a lot of use left in them, personally, 154CM is one of my favorite steels. So is ABL and Nitro V. But today I want to do a video because um, collectively with between my friend and myself, I've been digging into especially a lot of modern steel. Deals, things like CPM Magna Cut, um, S35VN, S45VN, 20CV, M390. I have knives in all of the steels and um, Honestly, whether you look at them on graphs, uh, I should also throw CPM crew air in there as well. Um, that's one of my favorites personally. But, uh, you know, when you honestly put them, whether on graphs, real life performance, sharpening, um, so many of these knives honestly perform so, so similar that today I thought I would kind of do a video, hopefully wrapping up knife steel. I feel like I talk a lot about knife steel from thickness to hardness to corrosion resistance. And I thought I'd really talk about honestly why most of these modern knife steels are all pretty awesome and realistically as I try to keep a pretty for uniform sentiment of don't really give into the hype because there are a ton of I think community pressure especially from the consumers as a whole to you know change your steels to magna cut change them to s45 vn 20 cv you know there's this endless train and i think part of what is especially damaging american knife manufacturers both large and small is knife steel i mean we already saw with companies like chris reeve knives where they changed they had CPM S35VN for over a decade, if I remember correctly, and then they changed to CPM S45VN, and within a year, I believe, definitely within two years, but I believe it was even just a year, they had already changed to CPM Magna Cut, and there is this incredible pressure from the consumers as a whole to say, oh no, we don't want that steel, we want this steel, and it's really causing a lot of these knife makers like Chris Reeve, and especially your smaller ones to have to retool from a more conventional like S45 VN, S35 VN to a less conventional magna cut and that is very costly and once again those costs are partly passed on to the consumers and is it really worth it? To be honest, in my opinion, I don't really think that the tangible benefits of something like Magna Cut are there to justify the additional uh, price increases, the additional slight performance, if slight performance increases over things like S35VN, S45VN, or um, other knives. Uh, steels like 20CV, all of these are extremely fantastic steels. Even things like Rex 45, K390 are extremely well performing. And honestly, the, the scariest part as I really looked at it, things like Nitro V, ABL, Magna Cut, um, K390, or maybe not quite K390, but definitely like M390, M4, uh, 3V, so many of these really good steels that I honestly love a lot perform so similarly in toughness, edge retention, corrosion resistance. I think corrosion resistance is probably the largest variance because 3V is a lot less corrosion resistant than something like Magna Cut, but ABL is really, really close to Magna Cut's performance in just about every single way. And so ultimately when it comes down to like modern steel, I really think that a lot of us are getting played by people like CPM who like, I think it's important to back it up just for a moment too, to talk about companies like CPM, companies like Bowler, companies that produce steel, because a lot of us look and get so caught up looking at the surface of just this knife. Like, why isn't this Magna Cut? You know, why are they able to bring us Magna Cut at such a low price? I think it's really important to know that, you know, companies like um, like I said, CPM or Crucible, uh, Bowler, all of these companies manufacture steel for sale. They are kind of like the ultimate knife maker because they are the ones selling the steel to the people who make the knives for us to use. And so there's a lot of pressure 
from us by people like CPM to say, because when, especially with MagnaCut, when it came out, CPM was touting it to be the best deal, revolutionary. It would change your life. And it was very interesting because it was largely Crucible or CPM um, who was pushing that kind of mantra. And so by and large, they pushed that to the consumers. And then the consumers turned around and said, hey, if you don't use MagnaCut, we're not buying your knives. And so you see companies like Chris Reeve, who had that kind of momentary like oh no and so they swapped from something like CPM S45 VN which is a very good steal in and of itself um, to something like Magna Cut and that um, boosted sales for Crucible right and so I think it's far more um, like we have to keep our heads on a swivel or we have to really be mindful because companies like CPM are in the business to make money. And so they're not entirely, um, I think being honest with us when it comes down to things like Magna Cut because Magna Cut performs extremely similar to several other CPM models of steel out there. However, Magna Cut has a new fancy flashy name because you have steels previously like once again S45VN. Um, you have S35VN, S30V and largely those names were kind of put out there not so much to like make a name but those letters and numbers stood for things like v equals vanadium right and 45 is a degree of content and same same with things um and so a lot of that, you know, naming convention was really the um, elemental makeup of the alloy, because of course these are all alloys using things like chromium, um, carbon, vanadium, and many other different elements in there to make an alloy. So when you come out with something like Magna Cut, it doesn't have, or it's ditched that previous more conventional naming uh, convention as a whole to make it sound more applicable, more attractive, and ultimately to move more units. Even with the very initial release of Magna Cut, there was this kind of um, almost Fallout inspired, but ultimately like 1960s, 1950s esque, um, you know, advertisements. And maybe I'll have to roll them in so you guys can see if you haven't seen them uh, to promote Magna Cut. And we've never really seen that with most of these steels. I mean, even. I mean, even though things like CPM S30V were originally designed for use in knives, like this is a knife specific alloy, um, we never really saw them promoted by the actual knife company. And part of that might be in due to the fact that at the time when it came to things like S30V, like knife consumers weren't as steel aware, I guess you could say, like we weren't as aware of what elemental properties a steel had in it by and large. I mean, obviously there were always people who were into that metal urgy, but um, as a whole, most people weren't as like into it or didn't know as much. So ultimately it, it was kind of one of those things where, you know, companies like CPM marketed S30V to companies like let's say Strider or Chris Reeve or Hinderer um, and then got them to buy it. But this, especially with Magna Cut, we saw this almost weird juxtaposition where CPM marketed their steel to the consumers and then the consumers turned around and marketed it to the knife company. Companies. And I think that that's very dangerous because once again, like I said, it's very easy for a company like CPM or Bowler or any of these um, manufacturers of steel to say, hey, we just invented the world's best steel. This is it. This is as good as it gets. And you're going to want it in all of your knives. And then suddenly as a consumer, we just think, okay, well, CPM, the manufacturer just told me this is the world's best steel. So now you have to make me a knife out of the world's best steel. Even though, like I said, on paper, now that we're really getting more, um, you know, like metrics for use uh, for corrosion resistance, toughness, edge retention, it really is performing more in line with things like ABL. So it's not as incredible as you might think. Now that doesn't mean, and I, it doesn't, like ultimately mean that things like Magna Cut are poor steels. It's just why are we retooling or why are we making our knife makers like Chris Reeve entirely retool their whole company to 
meet that demand of a knife that's steel that really isn't honestly that amazing. Like some people are definitely going to fight me in the comments about like, what do you mean Magnica is the best? Some people have fully bought into the marketing hype. And I have honestly gotten into discussions on things like Instagram with some knife makers where they truly believe that Magnica is better than AEBL. They believe it's better than crew wear. They believe it's better than, um, just about any steel out there and the truth is like once again when you honestly and objectively look at the statistics of the steel like when you see it compared to other steels the performance isn't that different like it's really not that different so some people the people who truly believe that things like magna cut are the future and these like new steels are like the way just aren't looking at the the true actual facts of that the steel and the performance um that's not to try to be like rude or mean to those people but that's just the the reality of it anyways guys that's kind of hopefully where i can close this knife steel debate and talk like i said i've done so many videos and there are so many facets to making a knife good for certain performances once again sometimes higher heat treats are better sometimes lower heat treats are better sometimes thinner edges are better sometimes thicker more robust blades are better so it, really when it comes down to it it is ultimately about your use but also too at the same time really keep in mind here that a lot of modern steels whether it's cpm crew wear whether it's magna cut whether it's cpm s45 vn 35 vn um so many of these like nitro v are, are honestly really similarly performing steels and they're all pretty amazing um honestly and i, I think it's like we're almost kind of ungrateful as consumers because we are surrounded by so many excellent alloys that honestly give us performance that our ancestors would have never known about. So like, you know, to think of just like a hundred, even 150 years ago, we were still using steels that weren't even really properly heat treated that were, you know, honestly, I mean, people were going out with knives that were made out of like cast iron and stuff. Like it, they were going out with such poor equipment that uh, like, we're now splitting hairs to be like this slightly edges this out but it's like it doesn't really matter in practice you're not going to see the difference uh, anyways you can fight me with this opinion if you would like but this is my opinion from all of the research i've done from all of the statistics graphs bars i've looked at all the cut performance test videos there are many fine gentlemen and gentle ladies on the YouTubes that have contributed a lot to so many of the things, sharpenability, edge retention, corrosion resistance, toughness um, of so many of these modern steels. And like I said, time and time and time again, they're all very impressive steels, but the truth is they all perform very similarly. So anyways, guys, as always, God bless and I'm out.